Hi, everyone, and welcome to the kickoff session for the second series of Building with Watson webinars in 2016. My name is Mackenzie, and I will be kicking us off today. If you missed our sessions from last quarter, we focused on providing a technical assistance from inception to deployment for building a conversational application with natural language classifier, dialogue, speech-to-text, and text-to-speech APIs. If you're interested in these sessions, you can still view the on-demand versions using the link in the resources folder. This quarter, we're following a similar pattern, but we're shifting the app focus from conversational apps to social media monitoring apps while integrating the results into a BI dashboard. Our first session today will start by providing a technical overview of the various APIs commonly used to initiate social media monitoring capabilities. Now, before I introduce your speaker, I'd like to address a few of our housekeeping items. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets that you can use. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can click on the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your question. We will try to answer as many of these as we can during the live Q&A. If a more detailed answer is needed or we run out of time, it will be answered later in our Slack channel. A copy of today's slide deck and links to some additional materials are available in the resource list widget that looks like a green folder. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the Help widget. It has a question mark icon and covers common technical issues. All registrants of today's webcast will receive a follow-up email within the next 24 hours containing all of the relevant materials, including the slide deck, recording, and Q&A transcripts. Also, feel free to post your thoughts and questions on Twitter using the hashtag buildingwithwatson. And don't forget to join our public Slack channel after the webinar for continued discussion and extended Q&A. At this time, I'd like to introduce our speakers for today. We have Zach Walchuk, who is a developer evangelist for Watson Developer Cloud, and Alexis Clare, the offering manager for Watson's Emotion Analysis API. Zach? Thanks, Mackenzie. So I'd like to talk a little bit about our goals for both this webinar series and uh, today's specific webinar. So what we're trying to do here is show you all the tools you need to build a social media monitoring app. And we're going to start today by looking at the APIs that might be involved with this and give you a high-level high look at the APIs and what their functionalities are. And then in our next session, we're going to dig a little deeper into the technical content of how to use these APIs and how they might be put together into uh, an application. And then finally, in our, uh, our webinar following that one, we're going to look at how we can add even more services to enhance the social media monitoring. And then we'll have a few more after that to co cover other aspects of building your application. So as I said, today we're going to look at the services that go into making the app. And the first service we're going to look at is Alchemy Language. So Alchemy Language is actually a suite of natural language processing tools that can help you understand your text and, and what might be in that text. So this text could be anything from Twitter feeds. It could be uh, web pages. It could be news articles, any text can be processed to get some insight. And that insight includes things such as keyword extraction, where we can tell what words are mentioned frequently or prominently in your text. We can also do entity extraction, so we can detect if things such as companies or people are mentioned in that text. And we can help make sure that when you are looking at the text, if you are trying to search for something that's related to your company or your brand or yourself as a person, when you do a search for it, rather than just returning all results that have a similar name, we can make sure it's actually mentioning your brand as a company. So a really good example for that would be uh, Apple. It's just a very common example. If you're searching for Apple and you mean Apple Computer, the company, um, if you just do a generic search, you might also get some results about Apple, the fruit. But when you're using this technology, we can actually recognize when Apple is mentioned as a company and when it's mentioned as a fruit, so you can tell the difference. And you can make sure that any analysis you do based on your searching for Apple is only looking at the results for the company. So some of the coolest features that Alchemy Language has are our sentiment analysis and our emotion analysis. 
And these are going to be very helpful tools for you when you're building out any kind of a social media monitoring app. What sentiment analysis does is it can take text and it will classify it as either positive, negative, or neutral. And it can do this either at the document level, which could be anything as, as small as a, a tweet or it could be something larger like an article. We can also target that sentiment analysis to specific words. So, for example, you could be doing keyword extraction on uh, the, your Twitter feed to see, you know, what words are being mentioned frequently. And you can look and see, in addition to that keyword extraction, what is the sentiment for each of those keywords. Uh, you could also do things such as looking for your name mentioned as a company using entity extraction. And in anything that mentions your name as a company, you know, what is the sentiment of the other keywords being mentioned so you can find what things people like or dislike when they're talking about your brand. So sentiment is great, but we can expand those capabilities even more now uh, using our emotion analysis, which covers some more uh, fine-grained aspects of how people are talking. And to give us a little more detail about emotion analysis, I'm going to hand it over to Alexis. Thank you, Zach. So hello, everyone. Um, I am the offering manager for Emotion Analysis API, which is our latest API to join the Alchemy Language suite. So we released this API as a beta API in late February. Um, and right now, we're in the process of having users test it out and let us know how they're using it and giving us feedback on this API. But what emotion analysis does, as Zach alluded to, is it allows users to go one step deeper than sentiment analysis. Um, so, you know, obviously with sentiment, you have positive and negative. With emotion analysis, we can actually detect the probability that joy, anger, disgust, fear, and or sadness were expressed in a given text. So this analysis is done at the document level. So whatever amount of text you put into the system, you'll get the probability scores for those five emotions for that whole text. So it can be a full article or it can be a single tweet. Um, and you'll get the joy, angus, anger, disgust, fear, and sadness scores for that input text. So how does this work? Uh, our model actually analyzes the words that a person uses in their text. Um, so single words, combinations of words, and based on the model that we trained this emotion analysis API on, will correlate, you know, the words that someone's using to an expressed emotion. So one of those five emotions that I mentioned. The system specifically was trained on all types of conversational text. So those are, you know, tweets, any type of social media text, um, blog posts, emails, anything that's more conversational as opposed to formal writing. So this makes the API perfect for social media monitoring and social listening. Um, and we're really excited to learn from the way that users are starting to use this beta API as we're looking forward to um, releasing it as generally available this summer. That's great. Uh, so for a use case, you know, just looking at how we could fit emotion analysis into a social media monitoring app, uh, there's the obvious use cases of, you know, maybe looking at uh, trending emotions around your brand uh, and, and tying emotion analysis with sentiment, you know, to kind of get some fine-tuned look into what you're doing. Uh, would it be possible also to say you're monitoring your own company's Twitter feed for responses and to, say, use emotion analysis to pick up when someone might be angry with you and, and give that response uh, higher priority? Uh, yes, absolutely. So um, this is actually one of the uses of the emotion analysis API that we're seeing uh, be most interesting and um, exciting for the Alchemy language users. So, you know, you can imagine if you're interested in responding one-to-one -to, -one to people that interact with your brand or your company via social media, um, you know, you may get one very angry tweet. Um, you may get one, you know, disappointed, sad tweet that, you know, 
slightly disappointed but not extremely upset. And you may get one that's just a general question that doesn't really have any strong emotion component uh, correlated to it. So with emotion analysis, you can actually help prioritize, you know, we need to respond to this very angry tweet first. And second, we need to, you know, respond to our disappointed customer and make sure that they're handled. And finally, we can move on to, you know, that, that third tweet that, that wasn't emotionally charged. So emotion analysis allows you to get that one step deeper. And depending on, you know, the nature of your brand and your company, you can actually, beyond, you know, strong positive or strong negative, figure out who to respond to first and then have a little more context about how you should actually respond. Cool. Yeah, it sounds like, you know, emotion analysis is obviously uh, already very useful in this area. Um, but I know there are some things that you guys are doing to make it even more useful in the future. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's coming up for emotion analysis and what people can expect? Ah, yes, absolutely. So, you know, this is kind of our next step in alchemy language in the world of sentiment analysis and opinion mining. And it's really where we're seeing a lot of focus in the market going as people are looking to differentiate their, their sentiment offerings, right? So down the line, we're looking to do some really interesting things. So as you mentioned, with sentiment analysis, you can actually find sentiment for a specific keyword or even sentiment for a specific keyword regarding a specific entity. So we'd like to do the same thing with emotion. So you can just take that analysis even a level deeper in, in all of those keywords and entities. Uh, additionally, as we're getting feedback from how our users are using this and, um, you know, what is most important to them, we're also looking at what other emotion categories we can add to make the service most useful. So these are a couple of things that users can expect to come down the line as this API continues to mature and get better and better. Great. So we're going to move on next and talk about Alchemy Data News, which is another service that can really be helpful uh, when you're looking at social media monitoring and kind of used as a companion service to your understanding of social media. So what the Alchemy Data News service is, is it takes in hundreds of thousands of news articles every day from a wide variety of sources. And it enhances these news articles using all of the Alchemy language services uh, that are available uh, as, as generally available production services. So no emotion analysis yet, but definitely we do have sentiment analysis in there. And what we do is we simplify your application building process by handling the content sourcing. We find these news articles. Uh, we store them for you, and then we organize them and allow you to search on them based on these natural language uh, enriched fields. So you could search for all articles that mention your company in a positive light and maybe also mention um, the or their articles that are in in the field of you know say technology and computing or something like that. So all of these enhancements like uh, taxonomy and entity extraction and sentiment analysis can be used as search terms, but they can also be used as fields in your response. So you can do things like show me, you know, for all mentions of my company's brand, uh, in the last two weeks, give me the sentiment. And so you can actually do some trending analysis of sentiment on these news articles. And you can pair this, you can pair this with uh, a social media analysis of things like Twitter and Facebook or any other social media outlets that you might be monitoring. Um, what's great about the news is if you're noticing something on social media, you know, maybe you're seeing uh, social media is going to be very responsive right away to something happening. Maybe you're noticing all of a sudden there's a negative trend in mentions around your company. You have an alert set up for that. Uh, once you notice that, that Alchemy Data News Service can really help you find news articles that might be related to that, that would give you a, f uh, a more clear understanding of what's happening here, what might be causing this trend. So we'll see the Alchemy Data News Service uh, being used in our BI dashboard our, that we're going to be uh, diving into a little more in, in our next session. But again, it's really useful for pointing out 
for getting a good idea of the conversation around your brand in some of the more formal news sources. And so it works great to pair with some of the social media that you might be also looking at already. And then one last service we're going to look at is our Tone Analyzer service. So the Tone Analyzer works by trying to understand writing styles. So, you know, we're looking at our, our people confident, analytical, tentative. We look at a number of other characteristics as well. But this is more um, more than just trying to understand, you know, immediately, you know, if that person is saying something positive or negative, but it's trying to understand your audience a little bit better and, and how they're writing. Um, and what this also allows you to do is look at your own social media posts or your own external communications and figure out how you are presenting yourself, you know, you can really get a better understanding, kind of this unbiased view into maybe how you are being perceived based on the things that you write. So Tone Analyzer shares a lot of similarities uh, with emotion analysis, but it is kind of meant to work in, in a, a different realm. And maybe, Alexis, if, if you could explain a little bit more about how Tone Analyzer and emotion are used in these different areas. Yes, absolutely. So, so Tony Analyzer is uh, a composite service that detects not only emotional tones, but also writing tones and social tones. So writing tones include confident, analytical, tentative. Um, social tones include things like openness and agreeableness. Uh, so you can get another layer of understanding of communication in general. So we think of emotions as things that people feel and tones as things that people communicate, right? So tone is really about, tone analyzer is really about improving the way that you communicate with others uh, using things like emotional cues, but also writing style and, and the kind of personality that a person writes with. So we see a lot of users interested in alchemy language sentiment and emotion for things like understanding, you know, social data at scale, um, being able to respond to people based on their sentiment and emotions, being able to classify, you know, response to an article or to a release or something, um, and really track the overall sentiment and feelings of an audience. So in Analyzer, we're seeing people use to um, improve how they, you know, communicate with others. So um, in the PR space, it can be improving, you know, the, the way that you communicate with your audience. Um, in the customer care space, it can be improving the way that your agents interact with your customers. Um, so there's really that communication addition um, where some use cases, you know, it makes a lot of sense to use Tone Analyzer as a composite service. And in other use cases, it makes a lot of sense to, you know, in the space of text analytics, add in the sentiment and emotion component um, with Alchemy Language. Great. I, I think that really helps clarify, you know, the different uses of these services. And not only that, but also what a wide variety there is of use cases for, you know, everything we're doing here. And uh, what I really want to be able to show everyone who's joining this webinar and throughout this webinar series is how you, again, can build your application and take your use case and turn it into a reality. So if you are ready to get started, uh, we have a couple of things for you, a couple of resources here that are really good places to uh, just kind of dig in and learn a little bit more. So we have documentation uh, for the Alchemy Language, Alchemy News Service, and the Tone Analyzer. We also have demos of each of these services, so you can kind of play with them a little bit and see what the capabilities are before you build. And if you want to see the services in use, we have a couple applications um, that are great to kind of show off what can be done. So we have a News Explorer app that takes Alchemy Data News, and it can do a whole bunch of things to help you better understand the news around whether, you know, it's your company or a person. Uh, what it does is it actually extracts all this meaningful information about related entities and keywords and allows you to look at a little bit of trending behavior and connections between entities. So I'd definitely check it out. It, it's a really cool app. Um, but then the other one we have is our, our BI dashboard, which this is actually built out as an application starter kit. 
Uh, so the code is available for anyone to use and get started with. And what we're going to do on our next session is kind of dig into that code and, again, show you the technical details of how this app is put together with these different services. And so it's a, it's a pretty basic app if you look at it, but it's designed for you to take and augment and make more specific to your own use case. So I highly encourage checking both of those out. And then if you do have any more questions, uh, we are going to have a Q&A session here, uh, but it looks like we're, we have a lot of questions coming in. So if you have more questions, if we don't have time to get to your questions, please join us on our public Slack channel after the webinar. Uh, we'll be around for at least an hour or two after the webinar to answer questions. But the, this Slack channel, you know, you can access any time to ask us questions. And we have many Watson experts on the line who are, are willing to help out and make sure that you can get your idea turned into an application. Fantastic. Thanks, Zach. So at this time, we are going to open it up to live Q&A. As Zach mentioned, we have been receiving quite a few questions, so we'll just go ahead and get started. So the first question we have here is from Jonas. What languages are supported by sentiment and emotion analysis? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I can speak for sentiment, and then maybe Alexis can answer for emotion. I'm not sure if they're the same. Uh, sentiment, we do, I believe, nine languages now. Uh, we do the 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 basics that, that we have for many of our services. Uh, we have English, Spanish, French, German, Portuguese. I, I believe we do Russian, Swedish, and Italian. Uh, and for sentiment analysis, we can also do Arabic. Yes, and then for emotion analysis, um, as it's a little bit earlier in its maturity, right now we are in on English only. Fantastic, thank you. So the next question we have here is from Semei. Does it work only with text? Can it work on voice? Uh, that's an, another great... Oh yeah, go, go ahead, Alexis. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, yeah, so I was just going to say I was assuming that was referring to um, emotion analysis, uh, as there is a you know big field around understanding emotion from voice as well. Um, but this service within Alchemy Language, this API within Alchemy Language, is uh, text only. So um, you have the opportunity to use our, one of our other Watson services, Speech to Text, and analyze the text from there. But the Emotion Analysis API itself um, only takes text as an input. Yeah, and, and that's Great. the same for uh, sentiment analysis and all these other services. They're text-based, so if you do a voice input, just um, you can convert that to text. Thank you. The next question we have is from Sandeep. Can you compare and contrast Tone Analyzer with Personality Insights? Sure, I'm happy to take that one. So Personality Insights is a service that actually analyzes a group of texts. So this can be a large collection of social media data like tweets or emails. Um, and it's really meant to get an aggregate understanding of a person's uh, personality based on their text. So it can detect the big five personality traits and um, various component aspects of those, as well as uh, needs and values that a person has. So Personality Insights is great for understanding users that you want to target. Um, maybe you find that the users that are most excited or interested in your brand or your company follow a certain personality type. Um, so that's good to understand how to interact with them and how to personalize your interactions with them. Tone Analyzer is all about understanding the tones communicated in an individual writing. So it's not meant to understand a person's personality, but it's meant to understand the tones that are being communicated in a specific document, um, line, email, things like that. So um, you can imagine a person might be a very you know, open, extroverted person, but they can be angry or they can be confident at times and they can be tentative at times. So tone is much more about 
um, in the moment how how someone is communicating, whereas personality insights gives you an understanding of a person's personality based on a lot of things that they've written. That's great, Alexis, thank you. Uh, I definitely think that helps to clarify. The next question we have is from Manfred. Can we only search within public content or can we analyze company internal documents and build up knowledge? Yeah, I can take that one. Uh, so all of these services will work um, on basically any text input that you can send them. So for the Alchemy Languages services, they do have a feature in them that they can take any web page and they can extract the text from that and use that text. So in that case, you know, those would have to be public facing web pages that you have access to and that we could access uh, so that we could analyze the text. But they also have the option of you just submitting text to it or even, you know, if you have HTML documents that are not public facing that you want to analyze, uh, we can do that as well. You just have to make sure to choose the correct criteria uh, when you're submitting it to the service. Okay, great. Uh, the next question we have is from Edgar. Can tone or sentiment analysis be trained by culture, for example? Yeah, right now we do not have the options to do any training on the sentiment analysis um, or, or tone. What we are looking at as we move forward, uh, you may have noticed we're already starting to expand our access to services that can be trained. Uh, we have our natural language classifier, which can be trained to take short bits of text and give it an appropriate category. We have a similar service for images, our visual recognition API, that you can give image categories and um, train it to classify images into those categories. What we're looking at doing as we move forward into the future is for our services, figuring out how we can build up the tooling around them that is necessary so that you can customize them more to your, uh, your use cases, your needs. Because I know, you know, for sentiment analysis in particular, there may be certain keywords that for most people, for the general population, would be you know a positive word, but maybe for your specific industry, you know, it's a negative word. Or, or there may be certain ways that you need to look at sentiment that are slightly different than the general understanding that we have. So, um, as we move forward, you know, our plan is to look at how we can improve that experience to make all of our services fit to your specific needs. That's great. And actually, a similar question on that note, can Alchemy Data News be configured to pull in particular news sources and exclude others? So that's a great question. And um, there's a lot of features you can do with that one to kind of meet the criteria you're talking about. So if you're just using the basic Alchemy Data News service, um, if you restrict uh, on the URL field, so uh, the domain, you can do some partial matching to restrict it to only specific sources. So for instance, if you just, you know, set your query parameter to say that the URL field is equal to something like NY Times, um, it will only show you things that come from the New York Times domain. And you can add more sources to, you know, you can do kind of, kind of an and thing. And if, if you look at the documentation, we have some examples of how to do that. Um, we can also, we have a parameter in there that allows you to choose kind of the level of uh, respectability of the different news sources. Um, so we have everything from things like New York Times all the way down to um, blogs, you know, in personal blogs, even, you know, some forum posts get ingested in there depending on what we have found that we think is relevant. And what you can do is you can set a filter to only allow either, you know, the the high relevance news sources, we call them, that um, have, you know, a lot of other links to them. They have a lot of traffic. People visit them a lot. They're very frequented. Or, you know, if you want to include everything, including the the ones that are more obscure to get a better understanding of, you know, across the Internet as general in general, what are people talking about, uh, you can do that. 
And then the, the final thing is if you do have any specific URLs that you would like added to the news service that aren't there, any domains that we don't cover, uh, if you look on our documentation page, uh, you will see on the first, uh, uh, on one of those pages in there, there's a link that allows you to submit a source. So we will take that information and if we think it's a valid source and looks like it fits with the news service. Uh, as long as right now, you know, it's, it's all uh, English language news, but as long as it fits those criteria, we can take your source and we can add it to the service so that moving forward, it will be available. We won't have historical data on it, but moving forward, it will be in the system. Thank you, Zach. That's super helpful. We have a ton of questions coming in, so we're just going to take a few more here, and then we will move it to the Slack channel um, really quickly, you know, just for people that may may need to drop off. We have a question from Greg. What is the Slack channel, and how do I get to it? Yeah, so the Slack channel, uh, we've set up this public Slack channel so that we can talk with you. It's basically, you know, just like a chat where you can type stuff in. Um, you can ask your questions about anything, pricing, how, how to build the app, how to get access to these services. Um, so to go to the Slack channel, we have a link in our resources widget that uh, will send you to an inviter. And the inviter is just a page where you can enter your email. And we don't take that email and use it for any other marketing purposes or anything like that. All it does is it, it sends you an email so that you can join the channel and get access to it. But I highly encourage you to join if you have more questions. It's great to have this discussion and extend this discussion in a more natural flowing way. Um, so please join if you can, and I will see you there. Fantastic. Thanks, Zach. We're going to take two more questions, and then we will move everything to the Slack channel, as just discussed. So the one question we have is from Parker. Uh, it's more of an experiential question. So I'm trying to match people to products that they might tend to use. Can sentiment analysis be useful for this? Yeah, so I would say there's a whole bunch of services that could be useful for this. You know, this idea of, of segmenting your market, segmenting your audience, matching people um, to the things that are going to be best for them. So with sentiment, what you would do um, well, there, there's a couple things you could do, but if you have an idea from that person, you know, you have access to their Twitter or their blog or anything else about them, you can use sentiment analysis to do um, what works best is to do kind of an aggregate look at the keywords that are mentioned with the most uh, positive sentiment. So what you would do is you across all their texts, extract the keywords, do sentiment on it, and find the ones that are mentioned positively. And over the course of, you know, whatever, you know, their Twitter feed or whatever, hopefully you'll be able to build up a bit of a profile that says, oh, they mentioned this a lot and really positively. They like this. Uh, and they tend to like these things, but not like these things, you know, that you might have negative sentiment too. Uh, so I, on one level, that's, going to give you some information into the things they like, and that might help you match products. But you can take that even farther. You can go another level where using things um, such as sentiment analysis, like I mentioned, like that, but also personality insights that we talked about a little bit. Personality insights is going to build up a personality profile for people that, as long as you can get access to text, again, this could be Twitter uh, or blog posts you can begin to understand their personality characteristics, which immediately you can use once you have the personality characteristics, kind of understand, you know, are they open and outgoing? Are, are they cautious? Would they prefer to see a commercial with a car driving down the side of a steep cliff road or something? Or would they prefer to hear about the features of the car? You know, so there's different ways you can uh, reach people both in terms of the products you offer them and how you present the products based on their personality. But what's even cooler is when you start looking at uh, cohorts. So, so for instance, you know from your information that in the past, this group of people has bought a product A and then another group of people has bought product B. Um, if you can get information uh, about those people, whether it's from, you know, conversations you've had with them over chat or, again, Twitter, of course, is a source, Facebook, any of these things. Um, 
what you can do is build up a personality profile for that group using personality insights. And then you know, as you have new customers coming in, if they're willing to share information about themselves, you can do a much better match of based on that person's personality, you know, would they fit with this product or this product? And you can really start to um, make sure that people are are matching on both your approach and, and the products they're buying. So there's a lot you can do there. And this is one of those great opportunities uh, on Slack. You know, we can discuss this a little more if you want to dig into it because there's so much we can do with that type of a use case. Thanks, Zach. That was extremely helpful. So I think on that note, um, we are going to have to close the webinar to keep it on time as promised. So for those of you that were unable to get your questions answered here during the live portion, uh, please feel free to join us on the public Slack channel that Zach mentioned, and you can ask your questions there, and Zach will be available um, for the next little bit, and we'll be responding to your questions. So don't forget about our next Building with Watson session on adding social media monitoring capabilities to a BI dashboard. So Zach will provide additional de technical detail behind some of the APIs involved uh, and just kind of go into further detail, continue on this process of building a social media monitoring application. So you will receive a follow-up email in the next 24 hours with a link to view the archived version of this webinar, along with links to the PowerPoint slides that you saw and information on the upcoming sessions. And again, we hope to see you at the next session. Thanks again.